New York and on the new Hot 97 app. Ebro in the morning. On Hot 97. <laughs> Ebro in the morning, beautiful Laura Styles, wrestling T. Rosenberg, and the legend, the, the King, King of Green. Yeah, 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 yeah. On what the happens show. on our stage Stop on Earth? Yeah, uh, what does that even mean? <laughs> You know what? I ain't know what that meant. I just said, <laughs> say it. I said it. But um, Wait, did that come from you, or does that come from Kendrick? That it, well, he told me well, what happened was he said he wanted to do the album, and then I went down to the studio and he just started saying, "Kid, say this, say this, say that," and he'll write stuff, and I say, "Say this and say it like that." And, and that's what I did. We have a whole lot of stuff that we. Even that, put yeah, I'm sure they just picked the little pieces of it. We picked little. Did stuff. you like how it came out though? When you heard yeah, it, yeah, absolutely. Because what he did was he didn't oversaturate it with it, oversaturate it. And it was important. The things that were said was important, and it meant something. Man. And it left a question. Exactly what, uh, uh, for example, when he, when I said we're gonna put it in reverse, so many people were so messed up about we're gonna put it in reverse. What does that mean? But if you listen to the album backwards, you'll find one. And you know you can't play album backwards unless you do it yourself. You know how I go. But a lot of people wasn't. It didn't connect with them until later on. But I didn't even know what it meant. Have you listened to the album backwards yet, Rosenberg? No. Are you gonna try now? I listen to the order backwards. No, okay, I think okay, you can okay. play it backwards. Yeah, you can play. You can play one of the. the I haven't the, actually not played in the, reverse nah, order. I haven't played the vinyl. Just by, by you with your the, finger on the vinyl. Yeah, you bring it backwards, and you know who was the very first one that ever did that? Prince. Prince was the first one to make that happen. He was. He had an album. One of the albums where he had like almost like a satanic message on it. No, oh. I'm gonna call you. I'm gonna call you on that though. He might have been the first from our world, but the Beatles did that first. The Beatles. Really? Yeah. You're right. Backwards masking. Revol and revolution number nine, you ba can play backwards. Backwards masking, that's yeah. what they called it, yep. I listened to the far side, bizarre ride to the far side. You were just high. Backwards. Backwards. Like, he was just high. <laughs> and he was I'm just high. saying, we had this tape deck that would play things backwards. It was amazing. We just smoked an ounce. I used to put a whole ounce in a Philly. Remember those Philly Titans? Yeah. The we big shoved a whole ounce in that and smoked that one one, one weekend. Just listen to the bar. It was, it was you amazing. Back the pipe. The Back the pipe. The pipe. <laughs> just back the pipe. <laughs> I know. <laughs> she <laughs> so, so do you, uh, well, let's since we already started this, let's finish here and then we'll jump into what you were about to say before we started. Mm -hmm. But um, I, when I saw you at the Kendrick show, I was like, man, this has to be such a cool moment. I mean, this album is up is going to be up for Grammys. This is one of the most revered albums in music mm -hmm. in a long time. Did it surprise you that out of nowhere? You've been doing your thing. You've always been Kid Capri doing big parties all over the country, but all of a sudden to be on a huge album, did it surprise you? I mean, I've been working with everybody my whole career. Like, there's stuff that people don't even know. When Madonna called me and asked me to produce her song, I didn't make a big deal of that, but I went and did it, and um, she paid me a lot of damn bread for it. And, uh, and you know, when I got the Grammy with Jay-Z, you know, uh, so many different people I worked with, it, it it didn't really surprise me that he called me, but it made me happy that he called me because of the, the fact of... It showed that he know what the authenticity is about, and it gave me a whole new fan base to people that might have heard who Kid Capri is, but never experienced the experience. So now they get a chance to go back and see what it is, or either come to my shows and they get a chance to see what's really going on. And he really just understands music. He understands where it comes from and who was the real heavy, who's the heavy hitters and the ones that move and shake things in hip hop and in the music business. Can we have um some just some contextual conversations about just hip hop? Yes, sir. Um, because you, sir, are from the Bronx, exactly. the birthplace of the culture, mm -hmm. uh, and you had the privilege of watching the greats that came before you, and 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 then you came and added to culture. Absolutely, as I as I understand it, mm -hmm. um, there are many people who are critical or think they know what the culture is supposed to be or not be. Right. Um, would you say you're happy today with hip hop? Um, I'm not. I don't complain. I'm not complaining about it. I will say that it's not for everybody. You know, we in an era What's, right... Hip-hop isn't. Right. What I mean by that is we in an era right now where anybody could slap their name up on something, call themselves something that they're really not. Call it, you know, grab a bunch of MP3s, for instance, and put it on a computer and call themselves a DJ. And, you know, and then you go to see them at their show and they don't have half the talent that they that they say they have or not, what they might put out there. So it becomes a thing where anybody just becomes a part of it because it looks cute. You know, and, and real fans that, that really love the culture, they could see through that. You know what I'm saying? And it's a matter of, you know, if, I'm not knocking anybody's hustle or have you do it, but if you want to be a part of something, make sure you do it thoroughly. Know, know that the music came, know that the hip hop came from the Bronx and where it's going. And, and, and older people have to understand that you have to have a new school way of thinking. You can't be stuck in the old school way of thinking. So those things matter. All those things happen right now. You know, it's just crazy how people think. 
But do you, um, I would say that, like you pointed out, mm -hmm. it feels like hip-hop calls out the bullshit still the way it did when I was coming up, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. With, through social media. There's individuals who be like, I know this is popular, but this shit is trash. Yeah, I and, mean... And, and would you say that even throughout time? Like, even when you go back to look at the yeah, Sugar I mean, Hill. Yeah, absolutely. The Sugar Hill moment was, you know, for real heads at the time, they was like, hold up now. Yeah, you but you didn't, you didn't like every record that was made, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Not everything was a hit, and, and we didn't, it wasn't like we liked every hip-hop record that came out just like right now you might not like everything and, and you know I don't blame it for any particular type of music I just say you know I just know that at a certain era you could tell who was who everybody had their identity you could tell from the colors of the music right now you could walk down the street and not even know that this dude got a hit record because he sounds like this guy he right. looks like this guy right, his right, cadence right, right. his beats his music everything is the same there's nothing that has colors to it so it's not, it becomes unspecial so you know, and, and that's where the problem. That, that's what gets a little scary when when you have to worry about where's it going next. What's going to be the next thing that's going to be that might either diminish it or make it better. You know what I mean? Well, how do you how do you qualify a DJ? How do I qualify one? One that don't care about his self, um, personal feeling. One that that it ain't about really the 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 cuteness about it. It's about making sure that you make the people feel better than they did before they got there. At the end of the day, those people pay to come and see you. So they don't care about what it took for you to get your music up or how you, what it took for you to get your clothes or perform. All they know is that they paid their money and they want to leave there feeling good and the promoter want to be happy. So your job is to make sure that you give those people 100% and they're, you're not doing them a favor. See, that's where we get a lot of problems. We get it mixed up. A lot of entertainers think we're doing them a favor because we get on, we start getting this bread and we get all these praise. But you got to remember, man, when them lights are shut off, they shut off. I hate a little rapper that walks around like a little rapper all day. Don't know how to cut it off. You know what I'm saying? Because when he walks around like that all day, he embodies this and he thinks that people are supposed to treat him this way all day. My name is David Love, a.k.a. K. Capri. It ain't the other way around. So that's the balance between how you treat people and how you get on that stage and what your perception is. I, I, my focus is to make sure I'm the best thing they ever seen. It doesn't matter if this guy that's coming on before me or after me has a platinum record and he's the biggest guy. I'm coming to make him come on 45 minutes later. And that's the focus, to make sure that these people say, kid is the greatest I've ever seen. And that's it. And that's what a real DJ is supposed to do. Come in there and make sure that everybody's happy and be able to step out of the box and be good at it, where you're not just playing one type of music. You be able to play for anybody, anywhere. When I did Khloe Kardashian's wedding with Lamar, um, I knew that they was Armenian. So I went in there and I played the top Armenian records. And the whole place just shook. It was crazy to see how these people were so happy to hear this music because they didn't think I knew it. But that's the job that you got to have anywhere. When you go to Japan, you go to Haiti, you go to all these different places, they like our thing, but what, what about what they do? When you go to a place like Texas, they have so much Texas music that never get heard on the radio that doesn't go anywhere. But when you come from New York and you play that type of music, oh, the first it. thing they're saying is, damn, how you knew that? Right, right, right. And it drives them nuts. So, it, it, and that's what it is. It's about knowing your job, knowing that it's not about just MP3s. It's about going out there and making sure every state is taken care of as if you lived it. And, and that's what I do. I, that's, uh, that's, a, that's a really great point. I love the, the idea about uh, the, a DJ it being about work. And one of the things you were famous for um, in the vinyl days is you watch Kid Capri, you just see the stack of vinyl. 15 crates of records around the country. It, I'm the first dude in hip hop to own a tour bus, to, to buy a tour bus. Um, everybody was buying their buses through me, as a matter of fact, it was coming through me and get their buses. But I bought two buses. My first bus was a 40 foot and the second one was a 45 foot. And the reason for that, I was doing six, seven shows a week and I was on nine different airplanes. I was just tired of that shit. It was like, it was crazy. So um, I went and bought my bus. And when I went and first got the bus, they was laughing at me. The people that was buying the bus from me was laughing. Like, you ain't buying the bus. Nobody buys buses. It's your album come out. They rent a bus. It goes out for three or four months. Send the bus back. When I came and buy my second bus, they, was, they knew I was serious. So I went and did that. And I gave them the best bus drivers. But the reason for me doing that is because I traveled all over the world. I mean, to this day, I do 150, 200 shows every year. So it's like, and from then to now with Def Comedy Jam and all these different tours and everything on, it was just too much, a lot of work. And, um, you know, we traveled like that, but I got, got rid of the bus back on the planes. And and just, you would, would you do a gig with 15 crates in the venue with you? 
you know what? When the Serato thing came out, Jazzy Jeff was the one that convinced me to do the Serato because I, the way it looked, my production, it, it looked like a big production. If you see 15 crates on the record, on the, on the stage, and I'm running to each crate and catching the record at the last second, and you seeing me doing this, it amazed people. It just, it just- That's it, the performance. It, it, yeah, that, that's it, the it visual. Made, right. It made people stop like, it just was something different. And I and when Jeff said, yo, get on Survato, I thought it was gonna take that away from me. And then when I started doing it, when I got on, when we did the Def Comedy Jam the last time, um, they asked me to play my own beats because they couldn't clear the Def Jam music. So I started putting the music inside of Survato. When I got when I did it, I was like, it's all right. And I put the break beats in there, and then it went on from there. And 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 then I, you know, my shows, you see the performance level was still the same. So it didn't look the same as far as visual, but as far as the, your the voice feeling and your of timing, voice and, yeah. Yeah, the, the feeling of it, it just even got even better. It got crazy. Do you miss do you miss the record part? Because I, I feel the record part, a pivotal part of what we just said about anyone can DJ, mm -hmm. is that at the very least, if in those days you had to at least commit the money. And the energy physically totally to, different to bring in records, and now you don't have to do that. Totally different right now. What we had, we had a saying we called "digging in the crates," and that means that you go to the record shop and get your fingers dirty, and you know, and just uh, do stuff like that, and spent a lot of money doing it. And records cost more than the equipment because you got to keep buying it. When the internet came out and you was able to get free music, that was like a gift for God, but it was also a curse because anybody can go and get it now. And they call themselves whoever and they slap their name up there and put their flyer out with their face on it and they did no work. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm a, I'm really stickler about stuff like that. You know, when I do a when they put a flyer on me or anyone in one of my shows, like I want you to go get your money. But if you ain't been in this business a year or two years and your pitch is as big as mine on my flyer, we're gonna take that off of there. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I, I respect also, the hell also, out of also, that. Also, 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 I'm gonna say something to you corny ass promoters out there that think y'all the stars that put yourself big on the flyers. Talk you know, like y'all big business, bro. You a promoter. A real promoter puts his name small on the flyer and he gives you big business. He ain't out there trying to look cute, you know, and he's bigger than the DJ, the guy that's bringing in the real money. Cut it out, B. You know what I'm saying? Y'all look stupid doing that. You know what I'm saying? If you want to be business, be real business. When you mess with a dude like me, this is the type of business you got to do. You can't do corny shit. We don't do corny stuff over here. You know what I'm saying? So, and I think that's corny. Well, so there's been multiple shifts in hip-hop, mm -hmm. right? So um, I, I would love to hear the moment you saw the uh, the MC, the rapper, mm -hmm. become more popular than the DJ. Mm -hmm. Because that was a, you know, Hollywood, you know, Earth, Wind, and Fire didn't want to play after Hollywood. I heard stories people would come to town. Yeah. Hollywood Hollywood would sell out shows, and the biggest pop artists would be like, yeah, nah, we not coming on after Absolutely. him. He got to come on after And us. I'm going to tell you the reason for that. Well, let me go to your first thing. The first thing, the reason why what DJ was so big, the reason why the MC got so big is because the, M the records came out, and DJs couldn't make hit records DJing. So the MC became the front man because of the voice. Mm -hmm. And after a while, you started seeing, you know, Grandmaster... I mean, um, Furious Five records without Grandmaster Flash DJing on it because you really didn't need the, the DJ. Um, that was one of the points. That was one of the reasons that I went so hard as I did because I didn't want to be looked at as somebody just playing records. You know what I'm saying? I wanted to be looked at as a force. I wanted to be somebody that when this dude comes on stage, he's going to come on 40 minutes after me because of the pandemonium that went in this building. And and that was the problem for all those years. They looked at DJs as somebody that was just a throwaway. Yeah, you uh, anybody could do it, and that's not how I wanted to be treated. So I sat on that street corner and I sold the mixtapes, not knowing I was in the monk and mud. I'm in the middle of Harlem, in the middle of 145th, when it was in the middle of killings and like, drugs was big. I didn't know if I was gonna get robbed, shot, or nothing. But I'm sitting on that corner selling these twenty dollar mixtapes like I had twenty dollar cracks, knowing that if if it catch on. And they get a chance to see me the way I want them to see me. It's gonna be, it's gonna be beautiful, and, and and that's what happened. It gave me a chance to to open those doors as a DJ to to be reckoned with with the big guys because before that, DJs was getting paid a hundred dollars, fifty dollars. You know, me getting paid ten thousand dollars was unheard of. That was a DJ getting that. that we don't get that. You know what I'm saying? Now you look at it. EDM DJs is getting a hundred thousand. You know, it's, it's crazy. And, and 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 no no disrespect to the EDM DJ. Shout out to all of them. But what they do is not really hard. I could go and do what they do and blow crazy. Can they do what we do? 
That's where the difference is at. But the music is so big, it doesn't really matter who the DJ is that's playing it. Mm-hmm. Akon told me himself, he said, okay, like, you can sell our stadiums yourself. All you got to do is make a, a house record. Make those type of records they're making. You'll go over there in Europe and sell out yourself because no-name DJs are doing it, which is the truth. Because the music is so big and our hip-hop culture, we love our hip-hop. We, we 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 support it, but we support it in a different way than they support their music. They will sleep out in the street to be at their venue. Where we're not sleeping, we're coming in the venue too late. Cool. We're going to get... Yeah, we the are a little too we're cool. too cool. We're cool. It's too cool. And, and that's the problem with, I think, my city. My city, New York. I love New York and New York made me and everything, but I'm not going to paint a grave for you. I think that... A lot of New York artists, the reason why they're not as far as they should be is because they're too cool. A lot of dudes from the South, you know, they took the method that I took, sat on the street corner and sold them tapes. Dudes that's even on in the South right now that have a name, they still giving tapes out hand in hand to people. And they jumping on each other's projects and they, and they, and they talk about each other and they make each other, you know, they, 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 they lift each other up. New York don't do that. We don't do that. We It's a thing where it's always a competition. And then another thing, once we get on, we act like, you know, somebody we did it owe ourselves. us. Yeah, we, somebody <laughs> owe us something. Like, yeah. we go in the club, we post up, you all swelt up, and you ain't supposed to be in there working. You in there messing with chicks. You in there trying to, instead of you in there giving the DJs the tapes and the, the, the little flash drives with your music on it and, and, and being a pain in the ass to the industry people and, and trying to be seen, they want to look cute and pop out, you know, and that's cool. You know, have fun, but take care of business first, man. And, and, and remember that, you know, you don't look bad because you're trying to make get ahead. You don't look bad because you ask for help. You don't look bad because you're out there promoting yourself or doing what you got to do to make something happen. And have have a good product to make it happen with, and, and you know, you'll get far. But we got to change our way of thinking and the way we look at stuff in order to get ahead, man. Who you, You've watched, you've been there for the emergence of basically everyone mm-hmm. um you know you were on you were on big l's first commercial single mm-hmm. put it on um first of all tell us what you remember about let's say the emergence of of biggie because biggie really did come through the djs first had a lot of records on mixtape had buzz in new york what do you what do you remember about when when biggie first got popping in new york um with big it was crazy with Biggie because i thought craig g was gonna be the big artist. craig mack I mean, I'm just Craig G. I'm sorry. Craig shout, G was a big Craig artist. G. Shout out to Craig G. Uh, shout out to both Craig G's, as a matter of fact. DJ Craig G and MC. But um, I thought Craig Mack was going to be the bigger artist because he came out first and the record was so huge. It was just uh, flaming your ear. It was crazy. And yeah, DJs was, loved it. We it, lo- all it, DJs love that record. Yo, it was crazy. And, 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 you know, he just had this, he had this thing about him. It and just, just looked like, like he was going to go far with it. So to see how it went for him... It was a little disappointing, but I didn't expect I didn't expect Big to be as big as he did, as he got. But then when I heard the Juicy record, that's when I knew that this was going to be different. Reason why is because he wasn't a dude that rhymed on those type of records. You know what I'm saying? Now, those type of records, let's go there. Oh, I forgot. And... Let's talk about New York break records and let's, 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 go, let's, to the, go, let's go to those types of records. Well, and also, there's a code, right? And I'm kid Capri can speak to the code, even all the way back to Run DMC. It's like that, and rap routines over break beat records and records that are just important in the club because Juicy and Two Mace Juicy is. But let me tell you, those records, Juicy, Rise to the Top, Misdemeanor. Uh, Funky Sensation, Outstanding, all those before that, all those records were dead records. Me and Starchild made those records good. This is why it happened the way it happened. Me and Starchild made those records big on the mixtapes and the, and the after hour spot in the SNS club. It got so big on the on the, on the um mixtapes that Puffy will take. Right. I, I would take an acapella, Stephanie Mills, put it with Impeach the President. Take an R&B artist, put it with a break beat. Puffy would take an R&B artist like Mary and put it with a break beat. He got the idea for me to do it. I just didn't do it with records. I did it on mixtape. But that's that was the whole formula. We would take those records and make them big to where everybody started using Rise at the Top, using this one, and re, relive these records again to where they got bigger later than they were when it came out. Rise at the Top wasn't a big record when it came out. The Kenny Burke record. The Kenny Burke record was not a big record. It didn't, it didn't hit and didn't go anywhere. It wasn't until we brought it out 
on those mixtapes in Harlem that it became sky high. And then you heard Dougie make he rise at the top and all these different records coming out. But it was because of those mixtapes that me, Star Child, and even Brucey B. Before so this uh, was before Ron G, well before Ron G, and Ron and, uh, G next, came. Ron G the came next way era. after. Ron that was G the came next after. Wave. Yeah, ne- so you're Ron- talking about the mid '80s wave. No, no, I'm not even talking about. No, 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 no. I'm talking about. Um, I got. I started getting hot '88. From '88 to '91 was my mixtape game. I left the mixtape game in '91, but from '88 to '91, you're doing these blends be- back then. Back then, this this was good. So I, I did when I did bar, the hip hop R and B thing, because that's what you're talking about, right? right. That was. Just, you know, that was BBD, 88 to 91. That was Teddy Riley. That, that was, was your a tapes. different music. That was a different music, but it was still the hip-hop R&B right. fusion sound. Right, but it wasn't... It wasn't. See, that came later, too. Yeah. That was... The, matter of fact, that came way later because the very first uh, New Jack Swing record that was made from Teddy Riley was Rap's New Generation. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay? And that came later. We already was make putting these... Mixtapes together, me and Star with with the R and B joints and the hip hop with the, the acapellas and all these different obscure records that nobody would really play. We was already doing that, so that's why it got so popular in Harlem because all the drug dealers wanted to feel a certain way in their car. They all they all wanted to look a certain way, so this music was their soundtrack. And us talking that fly shit is just, and shouting them, it just made them feel a certain relevance, a, a, a certain importance. If I said such and such and such for one three nine. That made him feel big. It just, it was bigger than just, it was bigger and then than having got, sex for him. It was just crazy that Kid Capri or Star Child shouting this dude's name and I'm going down 8th Ave with the shit blasting. It just meant so much to some to people. So, you know, and, and, and that carried on into records. It carried on into a lifestyle where you had to have this certain sound because this was the New York sound. See, and, and I apologize because for me, obviously, I'm nine years old at the time, and this is regional. This mm-hmm. is still regional. These are mixtapes. There's no other way to Absolutely. get these mixtapes. It's there on the street in Harlem. driving up from different states to come get my mixtape. And grab them. And take and, them. And that and sound, then, but it's not It's not that sound of, of smooth R&B over a classic breakbeat. It was crazy. It, it, it changed everything. Yeah, I remember and, Stephanie Mills called me one time and was like, thank you, I appreciate you. You made it hot in the street. Because she was already hot with what she did with the record, but I brought it to the hood in a different way with that and preached the president. How big was the uh, Melissa Morgan record? Um, oh, but dun, but dun, dun. It was... Pretty big. It was pretty big for Harlem. It was pretty big for the mixtape. As you can see, Jay Z sample yeah. you know, did his thing with it because it was that type of record. It was that type of feeling. It was a drug dealer type of record, like a street record. And um, so and, and that was just the sound. That was just the sound. Of what happened? And that's why it blew up the way it did. And when '91 came around, I said, you know what? I did everything I did with the mic, with the tape, mixtape. I left. I'm gonna leave it as Michael Jordan, and I'm gonna go and blow my career a different way. And that's when Def Comedy Jam came around. Mm-hmm. My first album deal came around. First tour. Didn't your first album, back. your first album, the one on the cut with you on the cover and a bunch of people around you. Yeah, and, uh, Money Mark and Silver D, The Laws of Funk. That was a lot. <laughs> what was that, 90? 91. 91. Yeah, 91, 91 it came out. My, my second album, Soundtrack to the Streets, 98. It came out. Um, the second album, well, the first album, uh, to go back to your question, they made me rap on the first whole album because you couldn't make it, like I said, you couldn't make a record as a DJ, just, you know what I'm saying? So I would say the rhymes that I did on my mixtapes that became popular in the street. And then I was sitting in the studio after making the beats and just write a couple of things. And that's how the album came out. Biz, Biz Mark had got me the deal, but I produced the album, me and Cool V. And then my second album, Soundtrack to the Streets, I wanted to be more of a Quincy Jones type of dude because I had met Quincy Jones. I was just so influenced with him and everything that happened with him. And I also was on this album with Stevie Wonder and Ray Charles. So I wanted to make a type of record like that. And I went and got Jay-Z and Buster and this one and that one. And um, we made soundtrack to the streets, but it was so hard doing that album with clearances and you know schedules and all that. I just decided to decide I didn't want to do no more albums. I just produce people's records and leave it at that. But then when battle rap came around, um, I'm saying I'm looking at battle rap constantly on television. I'm saying why isn't this on television? And this is crazy entertaining. Why ain't on television? So I called Loaded Lux and I said, Yo, we need to shoot this and you know bring it to HBO. You know I was on Def Comedy Jam. They waiting for me to bring them a show. I ain't never bought them one because I never had one. And um, someone called KRS One Rock Kim and Big Daddy Kim. They're gonna be our judges. So I went and got them, and he, we set up in this video store. And we did this battle rap thing. I set up a big TV outside. Police officers was outside watching it. The whole street was flooded, and he really had a good time. And um, and everybody just came and did their thing. We shot it, went and bought it, and premiered it at the AMC Theater on Thirty Fourth Street. 
and um, it became that. We ended up not doing that, but I stay, still stayed with the battle rappers. This is the reason why I'm so respected in the battle rap culture, because I was trying to help them get on before it went over the top. So now I did an album called Top Tier, where I, I, I was hearing, you know, battle rappers can't make good records, you know, and I'm thinking, I'm saying, you know, Meek Mill's a battle rapper, you know, KRS-One, Eminem, these are battle rappers. Yeah. These are dudes that has somebody say, yo, let me direct you. In the way of well, saying, well, that's the piece right there. That's the that's yeah. the right there. These battle rappers, a lot of these dudes give beats from these dudes. The, 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 the producer don't direct them on what to do or how to say it or you know. Well, they're not the producers; right they're just beat makers. Exactly, and that's the difference. And me being a fan of the battle rap culture and all these dudes, I knew the texture and how they wanted, what I knew they should be on. And every one of them that came in, each one of them said, "Yo, kid, this is the type of record I would be on. This is the type of beat I would ride." The ones that thought they were gonna come and do a trap beat, like Miss Hustle, she came in. And she thought she was going to get on the trap beat. I said, nah, 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 we're going to do something different. And when she heard herself, it just gave her a different perspective of, of what she can do outside of what she normally would do. And now she's just doing different things with Kay. So um, when I put the album together, man, and sit there and listen to it, it, it don't sound like Battle Rappers is on it. It's an incredible album, man. You know, And it's for the culture. I didn't put no mainstream artists on the album, not one. Because I wanted to prove that it could be done, whether it goes big or not. It's for the culture, you know what I'm saying? And we're just going to put it out there and see what happens. When's it going to come out? I'm clearing two samples right now. It's these last two samples I got to get cleared. Once those are cleared, it should be by next week or the week after. Once that's done, I'm going to get it out there. And, what's, and it's called Top Tier? Top Tier. How many tracks? 16. 16 tracks. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us who's on it? Is, is that yeah, Absolutely. Is, okay. Um, if you know Battle Rap, you'll know the names. Loaded Lux, Uh. Goods, Murder Mook, um, Daylight, Sway Sever, Mav Hoffa, Cortez, Miss Hustle, um, JC, B Magic, Charlie Cripps, DNA. Um, the list goes on. There's a few more. On there. Uh, but you got more. the names on there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, and they all came and did their thing. I, I tried to do one with Tay Rock. We couldn't get one. We couldn't get it. We couldn't get it for some reason, but the ones that I got on there, they really came and they just did what I asked them to do, and it was the best. You know what? Doing that album, man, it just made me feel like doing doing those albums again. It made me feel like getting back into it because they came in, did everything, was humble, cool dudes. And remember, these dudes, the reason why I even started to do this album, besides the fact that I wanted to move Battle Rap, was because these dudes got millions of views, no radio play. That's right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Me all over the world. like Because you don't need radio places. like that no more. I'm not gonna say you don't need it. I mean, but, it's a different, it's, it's a, a different, different level now. You, you well, know, it just meaning like you could make have a career, tour, sell tickets, merch, do your whole thing, yeah, yeah. without ever being on because there's multiple platforms. Now. Absolutely, and, 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 and the kid from Chicago, yeah, he uh, he really did his thing with, with, without being signed, and and you know. Chance the rapper without being yeah. signed and, and moving the way he moved to get three. Chance Grammys. still hasn't had a quote unquote radio hit. That one record, no problems. It did very well. Yeah. But not a smash. On but radio. it wasn't like a super smash. Right. But that right. just goes to show that, you know, hip hop is has moved and evolved and hip hop is popular music. It's, period. It's, it, it, with or without radio. With it's crazy. And, and it's something that you're gonna come to. When you love it, you love it. You know what I'm saying? And that was one of the things that made Def Comedy Jam become so big too. Because we displayed all these comedians, as a matter of fact, the new Def Comedy Jam is out right now. The new uh, yeah, Def on Netflix Comedy right now. On Netflix, that's doing real good. Um, we displayed these comedians, but putting that music with the comedians, it just made it that much more bigger. But really, what it was, it was the New York crowd. It was the New York people seeing them crowds going crazy, to laughing and just wilding and just. It was a combination of different things, but it's that music that drives everything. And when if you came to see the concert, you see me get on stage and do this 15, 20 minute set. We're putting these people in a frenzy. And by the time the comedian come out, they're ready. You know what I'm saying? When you see me at the, the Kendrick Lamar's joint, mm -hmm. I got these people so crazy first before, not that he needed me there because it's <laughs> just ridiculous, but it just, it sets a tone. It sets, it, it makes you know everything's going to be all right. We can let loose. Like, if I do a joint that, if I do a corporate show, and these dudes coming in, they got ties on, and, you know, they real tight. You know, it's up to me to let them know that it's all right to be cool, man. It's all right to loosen up, you know. 
It's all right. You know, I, I got the saying I always say. I say, I don't like dudes that walk around like they're sexier than the women. That right <laughs> yeah. there makes the whole room just loosen up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, and um, it's just a matter of just, it's, it's narrating, it's dictating, it's, it's, it's telling them what to do without forcing it on them and, and making them know it's going to be all right. Just, we, we're here to have a good time, man, and that's what it's all about. And that's why I'm happy, man. I'm most happy there, man. You know, I, I took dates where, you know, See, here's another thing too, Ebo, is like, you know, it's more than just about us getting dates and going out there and working. I said this on Drink Champs, uh, you know, a lot of times, man, these these promoters, they spend a lot of money on us, right? And they send us to these different places and something like rain can happen. You know what I'm saying? You do everything according to my rider, everything that's there. Something like rain happens where it don't bring your crowd, right? I'm the type of dude, which a lot of uh, promoters could say this, you know, from day one, that when something like that happens, or if a cop, or the cops come and they want to stop the crowd, whatever the case may be, yo, set your joint up, man. I'm gonna come and do another one for you for free, because, and and, they'll, and it bugs them out because everybody else will. I'm here, give me my money. I don't care about whatever. I'm out. But what happens is it makes that promoter know when I'm down, he kid ain't gonna kick me further. You know, I'm I'm gonna be all right. You know, I'm messed up right now, but he gonna come back and do it again for me and make me get right. He is, he doesn't have to do that, but. What happens now is that same promoter had me come back to that city six times instead of going get anybody else. And then on top of that, we don't travel with a bunch of people. It's me, my road manager, Jim, and maybe my opener. We go there, we smash it down, we get there, we make sure that if the club ain't looking right, my people maneuver things so that the show goes right, you know. And all these things happen, and it keeps me that much more hot without me being on the radio. You know, I got serious X I'm doing now, but for a long time I wasn't on the radio, no records out, no television show, but the brand. Because of those things, just lives on. Because they get their talent, they get the talent, they make their money, and they don't feel like they're threatened with putting themselves out there. If, if anything goes wrong, kid got them. They ain't got to worry about if they going something's gonna happen and they just stuck. So that's important for a lot of people to hear that's in this business because your attitude's got to be like that. You can't feel like these people spending their money on you. You know. What well, I'm also, saying? that's such a real DJ nature because when you're a real DJ. It, you're it's just being a person. It, you know what? It ain't even really a DJ, Rosenberg. It's just being a good person. I mean, like at the end of the day, man, God, God's going to look at everything we do, all of us. You know what I'm saying? You know, and, and you know, it's just being good. It's just but, there's a different, but there's a different level because you're talking about being a good person. But I also mean when you said the part about you'll get there, your people will make sure the room looks right. We care. If we're doing an event and, and I, we're all the same way, hosting it, whatever, yeah. you get there. When you look at the stage... Or you, you're looking for the setup and you want to help the promoter be like, we got to make this whole thing good. Right. As and opposed to hiring a kid who gets there and is like, I'm just here to play my set. I don't get because, the whole thing. That's because these DJs let these promoters throw them in any corner. Put them, treat them any kind of way like their dudes are just playing records. And that's was, that was one of the things about me that, that was important that you're going to not treat me like that. I'm going to be on center stage. Like this dude with the hit record, and you're gonna treat me the same way. It's gonna be the same type of rider. It's gonna be the same type of business. I gotta provide the talent. I gotta be make sure I bring the dollars in. But when you see I can do that, this is how you're gonna treat me. You're gonna treat me accordingly. You can't. I went to a show in New in New Orleans one time. I got there, and they had the turntables facing the bathroom on stage. The bathroom's here. The crowd's here. Here's the stage. The crowd's here. The, the turntables is bolted to the floor facing the turn facing the stage. And my thing is, this is what you really think of the DJ? That you don't think of how he's supposed to look? like, And more than that, how you want your event to look. So when we go in there and we regulate stuff, we move stuff around because they don't know better. And, then probably, and they'll probably argue with Jim in the beginning. No, we don't want to do that. No, we are doing that. This is what we're doing. This is how we want to look. This is it. And then later on after the show, kids, you was right. Yo, I remember one time the same club with the uh, bathroom thing. They closed the club the next day. And the following day, they called me and said, we, we closed the club, we renovating the club. After what we just seen, we renovating the club. They renovating the club, had me come back. It was a total different place. Because a lot of times, it be people that have money, but they don't really know what they're doing. They just want to do something. They want to get out, they want to throw a party, they want to do something, and, you know, and they want to look like they're the ones that did it, but they don't go about it the right way. And then somebody like us that do this for our, this is our life, this is what we do, we showed them, and when they showed them the right way, now they go and they have a career being a promoter, a real promoter, doing it the right way. And that's what it's about, making sure that you have your job with Rosenberg 
At the end of the day, if you don't do your job, nobody's going to call you, right? So you let these people see what it is that you do and how you do it. And if it's beneficial and conducive to what they're doing, they're always going to hire you to work. And remember, what happens on earth? Stays, stays on, on earth. Stays on Facts. earth. Facts. Now, I still don't know what it means. Though. <laughs> we, didn't learn that. we didn't learn that part, Ebro, but we got it. Kid, what happened to the records that you guys have still on hold? The Kendrick records that you say you guys are going to put out? Maybe. He has a lot of stuff, man. I mean, he called me the other day. He said, we, uh, we're going to continue this journey. Does he talk like that or does he talk like Kung Fu Kenny now? No Kung Fu Kenny now. Kind of Kung Fu Kenny Free. Nah, he cool, man. Cool dude, man. Very positive dude. And, and you know, for a long time, for after we uh, started recording the records, I was sending him these these uh, prayers. I get a lot of prayers from d- different people, and I was sending him these prayers every day. And the reason why I started sending sending him the prayers because the album that he made, the damn album, is pretty much about God. It's about being humble. It's about if you really listen to it, it's about it's a spiritual album, if you really listen to what he's saying. So I started sending me spiritual texts, and, and you know, he would send me, hit me back and say, yo, man, he's, this, this right here gets me through my day, man. You don't know how good this is for me and how important it is for me. And, you know, and it'd be little things. Like, anybody could do big stuff. You know what I'm saying? You could do big stuff and, and say, yo, this for you, and, you know, it's big. Okay. But it's the little things that you think of that a person wouldn't think that you think of that means so much to that person. You know what I'm saying? And, and the reason why is because it's so little. You know what I'm saying? You wanna impress people with big stuff, with little stuff. You know, if I'm a weed smoker and, and my chick, she rolls my blunt for me, but she doesn't smoke, that's a little thing. It's small and minute, but it's like, baby, I love you. <laughs> right, right, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's like, you know what I mean? A personal so, touch. Yeah, it's that personal yeah. touch. That, it's, that, it's that I care about you in that way, not in the way where everybody, in this way, where and I'm gonna tell you the truth. That's the that's another thing. When somebody tells you the truth, man, they tell you the truth, whether you like it or don't like it, you gotta respect it. You have to respect it, and you gotta look for the truth. You gotta you gotta search for the truth. You gotta make sure that people are always gonna be real with you, man. And and that's why the music business gets me a little mad because you know it's a lot of lies, it's a lot of bullshit, man. They not they, they, they don't care. I wish people would care about certain things the way I do it. I know I'm my own, my own person, but I just see things in a way that a lot of people don't. And, and if they did, they would get so much further, man. It would be so much, and I'm not saying you just gotta see it my way, just in a rational way, in a way where, you know, let's do it this way instead of being selfish. And if it don't work this way, then I'm denting it. Nah, that's why I like to see groups that started together and together. I don't like to see groups, you don't wanna see Greg Nice without Smoothie. You don't want to see, you know what I'm saying? Like you want to see people that start together making money, doing good, they're together and everybody's working together. And then later on, what happens, you see people break up later on, that humble starts coming in where they're not making that bread and now they got to get back together. But it should have just stayed there in the beginning. Uh, Kid, before you leave, um, got to ask you, if you have to choose between Peace to G, Brucey B, Kid Capri, <laughs> or <laughs> Kid Capri... The, you say you mentioned Greg Nice, the Dwick shout out. What's the better shout out on record? Because those are two of the greatest shout outs a DJ could ever get on record. I, I don't know, man. That's, that's, a, that's a hard one. Right but it's there. also it's also wait a minute. Let me think this through. Dwick was what year? Ninety two. And Juicy was what year? Ninety four. So in some ways, I mean, Juicy obviously went more. I think it went. The record went farther, so that's a tough question. Yeah, but well, and it's, but and it's Biggie. is more culture, and then it's like Biggie, du- and it's Dwick Biggie. Is more but culture, Dwick, but that Dwick, that, that the way it said is so. Kid it, was just, it was just Classic. solid. But 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 if you think about it, Biggie placed me in a good place too. He said, "Peace, Ron G, Boosie B, Kid Capri." Funk Master Flex. So he gave me a space. Yeah, you do. You got a spot. <laughs> he gave me a space. Oh, wait, is there Peace, Ron G, Boosie B, Kid Capri. It was new thought. Ha, yeah, funk right, master. Right, right, right. Now, real yeah. quick, w- w- is there any other huge one we're forgetting about? Because you've been shouted out a lot of been records. Been shouted out a lot of records, but I don't know any, any hu- Oh, I got one. Yeah, what I forget? I'm strictly hip hop. I stick to Kid Capri. Oh, ah, God. Yeah, yeah, I'm strictly hip hop. God damn, that's, that's good. That's crazy, right? Are you, yo, I would have died if that happened. That's the craziest <laughs> shit I've ever heard. As a matter of fact, I played hip-hop. that for um, this week. I'm doing the Def Jam salute on my show on, um, can I say that? I can say yeah, yeah, of course. On Serious Sex and Fly, I, I got a show called Kick Your Priest Block Party. And the reason why I call it the Block Party is because 
it brings old and new. When you go to a block party, older people and younger people, they all partying together. They're all hearing all kind of music. It's not one type of thing. Nobody's discriminated. It doesn't matter how you look, what you're dressing like. Everybody parties. So that's what I call the show. When you hear my show, you'll hear Young and May and hear Al Green afterwards. You'll hear, it's like that. You know, you'll hear uh, EDM record, you'll hear reggae record, you'll hear this, you'll hear that. So it becomes it becomes something a little different. And um, it's working out, man. And I'm having a good time doing it. And they let me do my thing. And I'm playing my own records, which I know Hot 97 would never let me do that. No, you know what I mean? Well, it depends on the record. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Let me hear that joint. Let me hear that real quick. Oh, man. Hey, hey bro, how come you never offered me a job, man? Because you didn't want a job. He's lying. You wanted a guest He's spot. Lying. So listen, here's a real story. Me and Kid Capri was like, yo, let's do something. Let's do something. I get on the phone with him. I'm like, yo, what you want to do? He's like, yo, I want a show. I was like, what time? When? Where? What? He was like, well, I got to do this tour. And then when I come back from this tour, maybe I could do one Friday a month. I was like, what are we talking about? You don't want a radio show. You just want to see yeah. if I'm going to give you a show. No, nah, you know what it was? Ebo, I'm going to be real with you, man. And, and, this the, and this is the reason why I didn't really be on radio heavy in the beginning because I knew that that role was calling me so yeah. much, man. That role. Well, it's a job, and ultimately doing this is it. We like, show you know, up every bro. day to a job. I know. They pay us a flat And you've been a star rate. for a long time. It's hard to show up when you've been a star for a long time and do a job. And, and we had know, that conversation but, on the phone. I was like, you want to be on the radio? But see, my, my the, the joint I have now, I would call my show. Send it in and it's done. It's, it's like easy. Like, yeah. It's yeah, easy. That's, it's beautiful that's, for but me. See, that's for satellite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we yeah. are a New yeah, York it's, radio it's station. It's we walk in here. Right. The subway's fucked up. Yeah, yeah. The police is tripping. We got shit. We got to handle today. Traffic, right? all this all dumb that. shit. We got to yeah. talk in real life. This ain't just yeah. send in a show. This, right. ain't, this ain't that. It's right. a jobby job. You right. But that's why. But one of these days. I knew you didn't want to do it. You just wanted to get me on the phone and be like, let me see this little nigga give me a No, 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 no. You know what it is, man? Look, man, I really love. I love that's how the OGs treat me. Yo, yeah, yo, yo, little nigga. You, 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 you respect it. That's off the truth. <laughs> that's off the truth, baby. But my thing is, man. I just, I'm just so New York, and I just love my people. Just hear what we doing. I just love that's to real. make sure people love. To, yo, dude. We New any York morning. Man. Any morning you wake up and you want to deal with that traffic getting here, and you're like, yo, <laughs> I'm gonna get busy today. All you gotta do is call. All right, that's promise. Yourself. Yeah, you gotta come. One of these Fridays, just come just through and smash out. out. Just come bug out, man. All right, yeah. Whatever. All right, cool. But he gonna, he, you okay. know he gonna, how long it took us to schedule this? We've been trying to schedule you here since right. the Kendrick album came out. <laughs> you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. I, 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 we, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I can't say that. I can't say shit. Yo, give it up for King Capri. Yo, listen, that Thank top you, tier album when it drops. We don't have a date yet. You don't Not have yet. a date. It's coming very soon. I'm just getting these two samples clear. But listen, man, you go to Kick Capri 101 on the Twitter and the Instagram. I'm always giving information about what's going on and where I'm at and what's going on with the album and just different things so you can check that and listen to what's going on and you'll get everything you need man boom thanks kid